Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time, hi, welcome. My name is Zach. I am a makeup artist and medical esthetician based in Toronto, Canada. And my goal here on YouTube is to make beauty as simple and easy as I can for the everyday consumer like you and me. Today is a special video because it was actually inspired by a user comment on my tinted sunscreen video. She said she doesn't really understand undertones and through my 10 years of working as a makeup artist, that is something that you hear more often than not because undertone for your foundations, concealers, even your color products like your blush, bronzer, eyeshadow, it gets really confusing because there are so many different conflicting this is warm, this is cool, this is neutral, this is peach, this is red, this is golden. There's so many different tones that can be associated with undertones. So I wanted to create a new addition to my beginner friendly makeup series and create a video all about finding your undertone. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. When we're looking at our complexion, it can get really confusing. I'm not gonna lie, it can get really confusing. So first thing I like to kind of figure out is the depth of color. Now, depth of color is another thing that can skew kind of brand to brand, person to person. For me though, with also having my background in aesthetics, I use the kind of Fitzpatrick scale, which is a skin typing scale we use in aesthetics for treatments such as laser, chemical peels, things like that. And what that does is it is a scale of Fitzpatrick one to Fitzpatrick six. And with each number as the number increases, the skin tone gets a little bit darker. When I'm thinking about depths of skin tones, I like to break down my kind of depths of color into six categories. And that's what works for me. Fair, light, light medium, medium tan, dark and deep. Just kind of take that with a grain of salt. That's just in my mind what works for simplifying things. So once you kind of figure it out where your depth is, and if you're in between two of those kind of different spectrums, like for me, I feel like my skin sits between fair and light, and that can change throughout the course of the year. So that's something else to keep in mind. You're gonna start matching your foundation. It's best to start with a clean canvas. All I have on my skin is my CeraVe moisturizing cream. It's a nice basic moisturizer. It doesn't interfere with makeup. So we're gonna try a few different foundations. So I wanted to use something that was very simple and wouldn't interfere with anything we put on top of it. Ideally, you wanna do this in front of natural lighting. So find a nice window with nice sunlight and grab a mirror, hold your mirror, what I like to say conversational length away. So a good arm length away from you. And that way you can really kind of assess a broader picture. Because if you're holding your mirror up close and looking at it, one, you are gonna kind of zone in on certain points or certain colors in the skin, which we call surface tones. Surface tones often get confused with undertones. So when we're thinking about our surface tones, let's kind of break that down a little bit more. So the most common surface tone that I see a lot working with clients is redness. For me, I'm a great example. I do have rosacea. So through the fronts of my cheeks, my forehead, around my mouth, sides of my nose, even the bridge of my nose, I have a lot of redness. Now that redness doesn't carry down to my neck, but if I go down to my chest, my chest has a little bit more kind of a red pinkiness, and that is from sun damage I did in my early 20s. That is a tricky thing, and that's why it's good to look at the broad picture, because when you look at the broader picture, you'll see Normally there's a different tone in the face, the neck, the chest, the shoulder, the hand, and the arm. When you're looking at your tones, get a broader picture of what the overall tone you're trying to meet. Surface tones to look out for is like we said, redness. You might also find yellowness in the skin, which is what we call sallowness. Sallowness, it can be a few different causes from lifestyle to kind of general aging. So as we get older, our skin cells aren't turning over as quickly as they do when we're younger. So you can get a buildup of skin cells on the skin, which kind of, kind of create a gray cast, which for a lot of people that can kind of translate as more of a yellow or sallow skin tone. Other things you might see on the surface of the skin is areas of pigmentation, which might be brown. They can go from a light kind of peachy brown to a dark brown, even like a dark purpley brown with a deeper skin tone. And that is something that 
is pigmentation. So it can come from a host of different reasons. Think of things like some of those reasons can be things like what I have. So sun damage, you can have melasma, or you can even have something like post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation to where, say for instance, you get a blemish on your cheek. It heals, but once it heals, you have a little bit of a darker kind of browny purple discoloration. That would be called post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. With those, we're not going to focus on that too much right now because we are going to talk about correcting towards the end of the video. So stay tuned for that. So now that we kind of have our surface tones out of the way, we can kind of step back and assess our skin as a whole. When I look at my face, I can see my face is darker than my neck, but my neck is darker than my hand. So if I try to match the lightest point and I try to go this light on my face where I'm trying to put like a light veil over something that's darker, it can create a gray cast to it. So I have a few different options. I could kind of correct to the tone of my face, then go on with a color that matches my body, or I could find a tone that kind of meets my neck because my neck is kind of the in-between tone. It's darker than my hand, but it's lighter than my face. That'd be kind of a great mid-tone. And the tone of my neck tends to be more in line with my chest and shoulder area. When you're matching your foundation, you also kind of need to think about what is exposed. For instance, if I'm doing a wedding or if I was doing like a, before I moved to Canada, I was doing a lot of kind of makeup for boudoir photo shoots. So depending on how much skin is on display, kind of depends on the color we're matching. If you're someone like me, who the most skin you show is kind of your neck, sometimes the chest area if you're wearing a V-neck, maybe your arm if you're wearing a short sleeve, match the overall color. That is just makes it simple. And then if you're wearing something a little bit lower, you maybe you can bring your foundation a little bit lower. We're gonna kind of look for that in-between color for me today since we are matching on me. <laughs> So when you're looking in natural lighting, we're gonna now start looking for undertones. And undertones can be a little tricky, especially if you don't have a large heap of foundations on hand or if you're in a drugstore trying to match. So there are a few different tricks you can do. So we have one called the white test. You'll hold up a piece of white fabric, so pure, clean, bright white. Hold that up to your face if that kind of works better for you, then that means you would lean more on the neutral to cool side. But if you hold up off-white, and off-white is that shade that looks better against your skin versus pure white, then that would mean you're more on the neutral to warm side. The next test you can do is the vein trick. So when you look at your veins in light, if they look more blue-purple, that would mean you're neutral or cool. If they tend to be more kind of blue to green, then you might be more on the warm side. Now, that can be a little misleading though, because now we're in an age where a lot of people use fake tanner, they use body makeup. And if you're wearing a fake tanner, it's gonna skew the color of your veins, and that just, it's kind of off. So that can be a general guide. For me, I like to look at the veins as a last resort if I'm really not sure. Jewelry tends to be a little bit more of an old fashioned because now you have people who wear all different colors of jewelry. So the original way of thinking is if you tend to lean towards silver jewelry, that would mean you're more on the neutral to cool side. If you prefer gold, then you would be more on the neutral to warm side. Now you have shades like rose gold, which is a mix of silver and gold. So that can fall in the middle. That tends to be more of a universally flattering color. Jewelry is another one. I tend to lean towards silver jewelry, but I do have some gold in my collection and I wear it and I like the way it looks on me. So that's why I don't like to look at the jewelry tone either. For me, looking at the overall skin tone in natural light tends to be the most resourceful way of trying to figure out the undertone. And if you go to a makeup counter, like somewhere like Sephora or even MAC, then you can get someone to match you and they can kind of walk you through the process. So today, we I've got a few different foundations, so we're gonna look at matching. Now, I do have facial hair, so I cannot get a clean kind of stripe of foundation from my cheek to my neck. So I'll apply some on my cheek and the same position on my neck. And also, I'm gonna be using the same foundation brush for all three swatches, and I'll be cleaning between each step just to keep things consistent because the density of your brush can affect how dense or how sheer a product goes on. So I wanna keep it as consistent as possible. And I also look for foundations with a similar level of coverage because if a foundation is more sheer, you get more flexibility. If it's more full coverage, then you get more opacity and that's when undertone gets even trickier. So the first foundation we're gonna look at is my Givenchy 
This is the Prism Lieb Foundation, and I, this is in shade 1C105. So this is a cool, more blue pinky undertone. So I am going to swipe that right here and on my neck. Now, when you stripe a foundation like this, it's gonna be a lot more dense. The pigment is gonna be a lot more dense despite, and that doesn't really matter on the coverage of foundation. You're applying in a thick concentration like this. And unless this is how you apply your foundation all over, the undertone can be a little deceiving. So stripe three different tones on the skin if you can. And then when you blend it out, whichever of those three tones tends to sit better with your skin, that's normally the tone we'll go with. So keep in mind when swatching, they're heavier and more opaque than they will be when you blend them out. So here is our cool undertone. The next foundation we're gonna look at is the Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. This is in the shade 1.5, and this is a neutral undertone. So this has equal parts blue pink, and kind of warm yellow gold. So another great thing about swatching and letting them set for a minute is foundations normally experience two types of color changing. So first, you will have dry down, which means how the color changes as it dries down. The next will be oxidation, and oxidation can take anywhere from a minute to about 10 minutes to really set in, and that's when it mixes with the natural oils of the skin and the color adjusts a little bit. So the next foundation we're gonna look at is the Chanel Ultra Latent Velvet, and this is in the shade B20. Now, this shade is gonna be too dark for me because it's just what I bought, because this is a shade I wear when I do my fake tan, but this has a strong yellow undertone, so you can really kind of see how the undertone sits on the skin. So so now we have our cool blue pink undertone. We have our neutral undertone, which is a balance of cool and warm colors. And then we have more of our warm color, which is a yellow or golden undertone. I'm sorry, the one back here might be a little hard to see, but what I like to do is now we can kind of do an elimination. Which undertone kind of really sticks out and doesn't look the most flattering? For me, that is going to be the more golden yellow undertone on the back of my neck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this and we're going to do a half and half test because that's going to be a great indicator. So we're going to go back to that cool undertone, which is the Givenchy foundation. I'm going to apply this to the right side of my face. And for me, whenever I'm foundation matching, I always like to try it on my chin. It tends to be the darkest place on my face because it's got more of that topical redness, which brings the overall color down. So I always like to match foundations on the cheek and on my chin for me because this will kind of show me how the color is going to work overall. And then I'm also gonna apply some on my neck. So here is a cool undertone on my cheek, chin, and neck. Now let's try the neutral tone on this side and that one is the Armani and Luminous Silk. Now we have our neutral undertone and our cool undertone. So I'm gonna let you take a look. Cool undertone, cheek, chin, neck. Neutral undertone, cheek, chin, neck. So what are your thoughts? For me, I prefer the cooler side just because it blends in better with my neck. If you look very, very closely right here where I stopped the foundation, you can see where it's slightly more yellow than my neck skin. And also on the face. The face is a tricky part because this foundation does work. I wear it. It's a great foundation. It's one of the best matches for me in the range. But if you compare the side with the cool undertone versus the side with the more neutral undertone where this does have a little bit of yellowness in it, it kind of flattens out the coloring of my skin. So you'll feel notice this side to this side, the side that has the neutral undertone, which is again, a balance of a warm and a cool color. That bit of warmth it has is just enough to kind of mute out my coloring and it kind of adds almost like a gray sallow cast to my skin now i can correct this by adding blush but if i look over on the side with the cooler undertone this side for me is just a little bit more lively it just kind of wakes my skin up it looks more like my skin so that means i will be a cool undertone so i'm just removing this with bioderma and while i'm doing this i want to bring up a good point something that i just mentioned i said i prefer the side shade preference is a huge thing when matching foundation especially if you're working with clients throughout the world there are many different cultures and different cultures have different 
preferences. So if you look at some cultures, such as the kind of looks and trends within Japanese and Korean beauty, they tend to go slightly lighter and brighter because it creates more of a kind of youthful, pretty effect on the skin. And kind of the US, sometimes we'll go darker to kind of mimic that vacation glow. So that is a great example of preference. And if you are matching a foundation on a client, always ask them how they like it. Never just assume because you might think you have the perfect match and then they look at it and they'll feel like it's too light or it's too dark. So personal preference is a huge, huge thing when it comes to matching foundation. Another thing of personal preference, you might be watching this video and you prefer how the neutral side looks on me where I preferred the cooler side. We're both correct. It's a personal preference. Now we want to look at the kind of depth of the shade. So would I be more of a cool fair, a cool fair light, or a cool light? Let's take a look at three different foundations. So the first foundation we're going to take a look at is the Hourglass Vanish Stick Foundation. This is in the shade Cream. So this is quite a fair shade. So now we are going to look at the Givenchy Foundation again. And the last one we're going to look at is the Pat McGrath Foundation, and this is the shade Light 6. Cool Fair, a Cool Fair Light, and then a Cool Light. So here they are on the neck. It's just a little too dark, and it's almost looking kind of like a bruise on my skin. Now, if I applied this all over my face and neck, I could definitely get away with it. It's another shade that works for me when I do a little bit of a fake tan. This shade, we've already kind of seen. If we look at how it compares to the other three on my neck, it kind of disappears into the neck. Now, with this Hourglass one, because it's a stick foundation, it tends to be a little bit more dense. If we start feathering it out, you can almost see it starts looking a little too light and it starts almost pulling gray on the skin just where it's too light even more so on my face if i start trying to shear this out where it gets over areas of the face that have a higher concentration of that surface redness you can see it just starts turning kind of gray and it's going to kind of bring down the overall look of my skin i'm not quite fair but i'm not quite a light skin tone. I'm more in the middle of a fair light. So that would be in that middle of the two lighter depths. So now we've established that I am a cool undertone and my depth of color is somewhere between fair and light or what we would call fair light. We are going to stick with the Givenchy foundation for my all over color. Let's look into something that can be even more tricky and that is concealing. First thing we want to look at is correcting. Now some people will apply their foundation then correct. I like to correct under foundations because then you need less foundation overall to kind of balance out the harmony. Corrector is something that you can do, but you don't have to do it. It's a step I generally don't take because I'm lazy. There's no way around it. <laughs> Correcting gets a little tricky because when you're thinking about correctors, you need to find the surface tone. So that either red, kind of blue purple, Oh, that's one we didn't touch on is blue purple. Blue purple, as well as some greens, tends to pop up under the eyes. For say, for instance, a blue purple discoloration, that is where you would get into conceal, correct, and brighten. So for me, where I have blue purple under my eyes, if I look at a color wheel and think about the opposite color, that would be orange or kind of a peachy color. So I have got a Charlotte Tilbury corrector. This is the light peachy shade and just tap it under my eye, concentrating where I have that coloration, and then blend it out. So you can see there, no corrector, corrector. While it hasn't obliterated that under eye circle, it's just corrected the undertone, so now it sits more synergistically with the rest of my skin tone. So no corrector, corrector. Other bout of pigmentation that I have a lot of on, my, on the surface of my skin is redness. So if we think about our color wheel, think about opposite of red. That tends to be a green or a yellow. Now, where I'm quite fair, sometimes my redness can take a little bit more of a blue pinky color. So if I try to put something too green on it, like your kind of over the counter kind of green, which has a lot more yellow versus blue in it, then I can start looking kind of bruised once again because it's flattening out that color too much. So I like more of a blue based green. So this is by LA Girl. This is one of their pro concealers. 
and this is in the shade mint. So I'm gonna take this just on my chin, a little bit on my nose, because those tend to be the areas where I have the most redness and a little bit of concealer goes a long way. Redness corrector on one half, side to side, it's just kind of cooled down that redness. It's just kind of softened it so it's not so bright on the skin. Moving more toward traditional concealers, generally, you want to find a concealer that matches the color. So when you are matching something and you're trying to cover something, if you're not using a corrector with your concealer, you need to make sure you are matching the depth of color that you were trying to correct. So for me, this is depth of color right here, that blue purple color. It's slightly darker than the rest of my skin. Let's take a look at a concealer that is too light. So this is the Rare Beauty Concealer in shade 140C. If I try to apply this all over my under eye area, it's gonna make my eyes just look a little too bright and a little gray where that shade is too light for my skin, but it's also too light for that under eye depth of color. Let's take a look at a color that matches my skin a little bit more. So this is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind, and this is in the shade 110 Fair. So you can see that's more in the similar depth as my overall skin tone, just a fraction lighter. So when I apply this over that under eye discoloration without a corrector, then it's going to kind of balance it out without making my under eyes look kind of gray. Kosas Revealer Concealer in the shade 2.5C. So you can see there, not only is it too dark for my skin, but it's too yellow. So then if I use this with a foundation that matches my skin tone and my skin undertone, it's gonna look really off. I'm gonna have a very kind of yellow, dark under eye, which can almost look like you've got a kind of black eye that's healing and going through those various stages of bruising. That is gonna look too dark under my eyes. I am going to go with the middle shade, which is the Maybelline concealer. While we wait for this moisturizer set, another thing we wanna think about, especially when you're matching either yourself or a client. We need to go back to thinking about the area of skin that is exposed. I know a lot of times, especially when you're working with a lot of skin tones that go from that medium tan to that medium to dark, even deep, sometimes there you will find areas of pigmentation around the mouth that tend to be darker. Sometimes it extends onto the neck and the chest is a different color. You need to look at the overall tone, the tone that is most abundantly on display. So say for instance, the client you're working on, they're getting married. They have a low neck top. Maybe it's a sweetheart neckline. So you're seeing a lot of the chest, a lot of the decollete. And you want to make sure that, because the chest will normally match the body. So if I match the face and the face is lighter than the chest and my foundation stops right here, you're going to see a disconnect. If I match the neck, which is darker than the face and the neck, and maybe even it has more of a kind of coolness to it. Maybe it has a little bit of that gray cast to it, which can make it look more cool toned or more kind of like on a darker skin tone, it can almost pull like a gray purple kind of color. If I match that, then there's gonna be an even bigger contrast. So what I like to do then is sometimes you can mix shades or what I will do is find a shade that matches the neck and the body and apply that all over. Now, if the client you're working on, they want to match a certain color and they're doing it for a special occasion, then sometimes you'll need to match either the darker neck or the color of the face and then use something like a MAC face and body to balance out the rest of the body. Just always make sure you are doing what your client's preference is. I'm gonna only keep corrector on the one side of my face, no corrector on the left side of my face. When you find a foundation that is a good color match, you can get away with using more coverage, you can get away with using less coverage. You have a nice flexibility. Make the foundation how you want it to be for whatever the day or the occasion is. But now you can kind of see between my face, my neck, and my body, there's more of a balance in tone. So while this isn't the perfect shade match for my hand, it was pretty close. It was the closest match we found for my neck and it was lighter than parts of my face. I just have a balance now as far as the overall tone. My areas of redness, even on the side without any type of corrector, it's not as apparent. Everything is just kind of evened out. Now I only have foundation on, so things are looking a little flat, a little one-dimensional. Once you start adding in things like your blush, shadow, lipstick, 
that's when everything starts coming back in because natural skin, as we found out, is made up of different colors. Skin has a natural patina to it. So there's bits of yellow, red, purple, blue, green. There's all these different tones that make up our skin tone. So as we go in, add in the rest of our makeup, add those tones back in, it just creates more of a realistic effect. So here is foundation and concealer applied all over so we've got our tone is very evened out so now we have the perfect base to finish off with the rest of our colors so i'm going to finish off the rest of my makeup and i will be right back the video for this look will be out soon and if you found today's video helpful if you felt like you understand how to find your foundation match a little bit easier let me know in the comments down below if i'm able to help you then that makes me happy. Up next, we are going to talk about how to really complement your undertone with the other products you add on top of your makeup base. Then we'll get into this look where we're mixing warm and cool colors to create a harmonious look. So make sure you subscribe to my channel so you can see all of my future videos. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and share it with a friend that you think might find this useful. I will see you all in the next video. I hope you have a great day wherever it is you are in the world. Bye y'all.